anada kimi sinyo anada Okie dokie. All right. Well, it happened again. Sorry. When I do a fade out on the previous week, I have to remember to fade in <laughs> the next week. Oh, crazy. Well, you should have heard the beginning. It was great, you guys. I nailed it. <laughs> Except for the volume knob. All right. Welcome back, everyone. We've got a new camera lens over here. Welcome, lens. Welcome to the close-up, but sort of wide angle. And, uh, and the overhead is here. Welcome. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Uh, so today's, today's theme is playfulness, so we're going to get right into it. Um, let's say hello and see who's here. Oop, I'm sitting on the cord. Oh, hold on. I'm trapped in my own equipment. Hold on. 
pesky cords. Not ukulele cords. Ugh. Headphone cords. All right. Uh, here we go. Welcome, you guys. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. It's pouring rain outside right now. I hope, uh, hope the power doesn't go out. Yeah, maybe Roseanne, if you could send me a reminder and say, is the volume up? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, welcome, Chris, Christina, uh, Bill, welcome back. I see hands. <laughs> it's another one of those shows where you have to fill in the sound yourself. You have to listen harder, remember? Um, all right. And who else is here? Let me see. Mary is here. Welcome. No lies. No sound. Uh, Cornelius, welcome back. And uh, yeah, Mary Vulcan. And Lacey, welcome back. Nice to see you here again, Sue. Rebecca is here. Wow, we have a, and and Guada Guadaluca. Is that right? Um, what a nice crowd. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain. It's like storming outside. I just, let's hope we hang on. I have a generator, but I'm not going to hook it up right now. Uh, but I'm ready. All right. JR, welcome. I love all the comments. Uh, once I get past the angry face, no sound comments, um, I'm just scrolling on my phone. You guys catching up? Okay, I caught up. Bill, <laughs> warm and dry in Seattle. <laughs> well, you know, you guys need some warm and warmth and dryness once in a while. I mean, we're. I'm happy to lend you some of our weather from Los Angeles. You know, you could pay me back later. We're generous in California. We'll we'll lend you our sunshine uh, for a price. All right, so today, uh, today, uh, yeah, we're, I, I, I wanted to play, uh, just play a tune for you guys. Usually I improvise the whole beginning, but I, uh, I forgot about this tune until last week, and I, I kind of just did it during uh, my weekly music therapy group I've got with some people with traumatic brain injury, and I, I just, I like this song, and I wanted to share with you the song, um, and also one of the ways I use the song, because as a music therapist, you know, we're always looking for ways to to use the material. It's not just for music making, right? It's always for something else uh, in addition, like therapeutic goals for my clients. So I want to talk a little bit about that. By the way, I did, uh, I'm uploading right now. It's actually uploaded to YouTube, but I haven't uh, published it yet. But I have a breakdown video of this song, the parts, the chords, the lyrics, uh, and all that stuff. But if you want to go investigate yourselves, you can uh, look it up. It's Pechinos do Mar. Pechinos do Mar. Don't ask me to spell it. Roseanne will get it. P E I X. As far as I get. <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, Pechinos do Mar. Milton Nascimento. Um, it, I is the composer as far as I know, and there's a few versions on YouTube, you can look it up. Uh, but it's a really fun song. This is just the beginning of the song. I, I often will just take, you know, part of a song and kind of just do that part as, you know, because that's enough for what I need to do. Um, I am using a few instruments, of course, the ukulele I have here. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, <laughs> Roseanne, I know you've got that you can handle all the pressure because usually you do that stuff without even me asking. So I'm just uh, I'm just saying. Um, but, you know, you can make the people look it up. You don't have to do it. They can do it. They're all smart and they all have the interwebs. So um, we broke out the Tantan uh, for today. I love this thing. Uh, I do have a mic right over here that to capture the sound. So it's kind of, it's super light and um, it's got like a Naga hide, a Naga hide type head. And it's just, I just love this thing. And you can tap on it.
So it's I, it's just a great drum, great bass drum, big sound for not such a big drum. Uh, and then we had, of course, the shaker. We had the agro go. I gotta hold it in front of me because you can't see it. If I hold it over here, <laughs> you can barely see it. Okay, here it is. It's in the dark. Um, and then uh, ukulele, of course, had a little bongos just added in, a little bongo there. And ukulele and flute. And the flute I'm using today, at least for this, this part of the uh, session, is a wood sounds flute. Um, I think you can see it there, right, pretty well. But look at the wood. That is, you see how it's got this kind of iridescent flame going on in there? Uh, here it is over here too. It's subtle. See that? I don't know how well you guys can see that. It's not in focus, but you see that? That is, I love this flute. I got it a couple years ago, and this is Brazilian rosewood. So it's a pr apropos for today, but Brazilian rosewood, super rare. In fact, the maker, Brent Haynes, with Wood Sound said, you, uh, you might not want to take that out of the country because they might not let you back in with it because it's illegal to import Brazilian rosewood. Uh, I do have documents, but you know I'm not going to take it out of the country. I don't even take it out of my house. <laughs> Barely. I take it to flute harvest, which is down the road. So that's, that's a nice uh, A Native American style flute from Wood Sounds. Uh, I just fell in love with the, the actual wood. It's beautiful, super hardwood. And Brazilian rosewood is getting, it's not getting any more plentiful, that's for sure. It's going in the opposite direction. So I, I nabbed it while I could. So um, those are the instruments I'm using. I'm also using a tenor ukulele. Uh, that's a kahua, low G tenor. And uh, it does have electrics uh, on it, but I just have it. I'm just playing it acoustically right now. And like I said, I have a tutorial on the song. So if you're interested in, in learning how to play the song, you want to know more about it, you can go uh, join us on World Drum Club. And that'll be for courses and private lesson tier patrons um, on there. So you can do that. Um, let's see. What else do we have? So um, I did want to... Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about how I use the song, but first I have a quick feature video because I like to just share with you some of the stuff that I have going online. So I, I picked a video actually for ukulele and it's how to hold the ukulele. So instead of me sitting here t explaining it to you, I'm going to show you this uh, small snippet of video and this is from the Ukulele Club Multimedia resource that I have available on Teachers Pay Teachers. And it's an amazing resource if you want to learn how to play the ukulele and then how to teach the ukulele. And you get tons of songs, you get all these videos, you get play along tracks. It's like a whole big giant package of media, PDFs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, mainly for the classroom. It's oriented for the classroom, but anybody can use it. I mean, I've got a lot of songs in there. Um, that are pre-screened for appropriateness. Uh, so if you're a music educator, you look into that. Teachers Pay Teachers. It's called Ukulele Club Multimedia Resource. Let me play you the video real quick. So this is from that, and it's just a short video. We'll be right back. Here's how to hold your ukulele without the use of a strap. You're going to hold it about chest height and you're going to place it near your elbow all the way down at the end and then gently brace that against your body just like this. You can support it with your cording hand but practice holding it without it so you get that feeling of support. Your cording hand will add a little bit of support near the nut or the head and then when you strum it you're going to keep a little bit of pressure in the crux of your elbow and against your body and that will allow your arm to move freely and you're going to end up strumming it in the general area of where the neck meets the body or wherever your arm ends wherever your fingers are that's where you're going to strum the strings you don't have to strum over the sound hole like it's a mini guitar so wherever your fingers end up and wherever that's comfortable that's where you're going to strum one last thing, when you make chord shapes, try to make them by curving your fingers like this and not curving your wrist like that and reaching around and bending your wrist. 
See if you can let your fingers do the bending and keep the back of your hand in line with your arm, just like this. All right, we're back. So hopefully you learned a little bit from that. It's, it's easy uh, to hold the ukulele, but a lot of people I, you know, actually don't hold it well. You can hold it any way you want, but a lot of people, you can always see the YouTubers that were guitar players that are now jumping on the ukulele bandwagon because they all, they all hold it like this. <laughs> like it's a little guitar. They like put it on their put it on their leg. I can't even do it because I have a strap on. But I can tell the guitar players because they all they all go like this, and they play down here. And really, it's like up here. Uh, not that I'm being an ukulele snob or anything, but I'm saying it makes it easy right here. And then you strum it right like wherever your wherever your fingers end up right after it's sort of in your elbow. Um, you strum it. Usually, I strum, end up strumming about where the neck meets the body, right in there. You don't have to go like, like it's a mini guitar, right? So just a quick tip there. All right, let's um, let's get into some of the ways that uh, you could maybe use this song, or I'll, I'll just share with you one one of the th ways I use it. So the song is uh, basically. Um, it's saying, uh, hey sailor, who who, sought, who taught you how to swim? Basically, was it the fishes or the sea? And so um, it's about your environment. It's about, uh, in fact, and we discussed this last week, and I, and I asked my clients a lot, well, what do you think this is about? And uh, somebody said, yeah, it's about learning from those around you. And so, yeah, it's like kind of like, your friend group, let's say, or your environment. Um, we, it's, it's, I guess it's the argument for uh, nurture as opposed to nature. And of course, when we develop, we embrace both. We have our nature, and, but we also nurture is very important. So we put it in the nurture category. Who do you learn from? Who are your teachers? Who are your role models? Uh, who are the people or, or, or animals uh, that you aspire to be like. And a lot of us, in fact, uh, the Garner, uh, is it, what is it, the learning, I forgot what it was, the intelligencies, right? The sty different learning styles. And he makes the argument, you know, some people learn from nature. Some people learn from being alone. Some people learn from being with other people and are social learners. Uh, some people are more analytical. Some are more maybe intuitive, emotional. So, um, but nature was one of those kind of learning. I, I feel like I'm like that. I, I will learn from observing nature. Uh, I feel like it's a good place to start because it is, right? Nature is. Uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer was fond of saying, everything is as it should be, and the evidence of that is that it is, right? We love Wayne Dyer. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so learning from nature, learning from the fishes of the sea in this case. Um, so there's that aspect. So we could take it down that that direction of who are your teachers? What do you, who are they? Maybe identify, what do you learn from them? Uh, and then we can get into talking about values and what's important. Um, in in this case, I was uh, we kind of steered it towards the environment of recovery. Uh, you're in an environment where you, it is kind of a school, not a fish, but <laughs> A school in a way, a place to learn, a place to be nurtured, a place to get direction, a place to be challenged, to grow, and to try new things and uh, challenge yourself. And as, as is, you know, World Drum Club, as is this environment, learning about new things uh, and then exchanging information, getting some inspiration, uh, etc. So I guess what I'm saying is the, the who you swim with, it does make a difference, right? And where you swim, where you put yourself, your environment that you put yourself in, does make a difference. Um, and sometimes that involves uh, not just seeking things out, but um, also blocking things out, you know, saying no to things or just filtering things that are trying to push their way into your psyche, into your awareness, especially online, right? We don't have to talk about that. We all know that. Another way I use this song is, is to elicit uh, movement. And one of my favorite ways to do that is with... Ta da The scarves. And this comes mainly from my ORF training, my ORF shoulder training and background. I think everybody 
that's been through an ORF level, been through ORF training levels, has a big, a big bag of scarves. So um, I like to have like colored, you know, just big colored scarves. And then you can just do all kinds of different things with them. Um, so speaking of the ocean and the sea, so one of the things I would do is just play the song in the background and then give everybody a scarf and ask them to, or I like to use the word invite, because it's not a command, it's a opportunity to uh, move like something in the ocean. And I don't even, I'm not even specific about it, just anything in the ocean. And it could be to the music, or it could be however you want to move. And it could be something living, um, I mean it could be like an animal, or it could be some kelp, <laughs> it could be some seaweed. Um, yeah. So that's another that's another thing I like to do, and, and I also have people partner up and um, mirror each other, and maybe think about you know what it is and when we guess we can we can guess what people are being you know I did this one time with a group of kids and uh, some of the people just um, a couple of them were just laying on the floor and I was like what are you guys doing and they said I'm a starfish <laughs> I'm like I know what you're doing <laughs> trying to take a nap no but that's that's fun right um, so yeah you can be whatever uh, and that's right, Christina, ebb and flow. Ebb and flow. It's, it's life. And, uh, you know, we can learn a lot by observing nature. I, I like this song. It's a cute little song. It's just kind of a... It's kind of profound in a way, right? You know? And, he, and we're talking to the sailor in the song, the, the marinero, right? The sailor on who taught you to swim was it the fishes of the sea. So, Yeah. So think about that for yourself, you know, who's teaching you to swim? Uh, what does swimming mean uh, to you? Uh, what is your swimming and who are your teachers and where are you? Where's your environment? Um, it, it's good stuff to think about. And it's also good to think about who, you know, what kind of environment you want to put yourself in. What environment have you put yourself in? What can you do to change that? Uh, what, you know, what kinds of people do you want to be around? Basically, you surround yourself with, with the right people. I think it, it, it helps a lot, right? Nurturing people. People are going to help lift you up and not try to drown you <laughs> in the ocean of despair. That's depressing. We're not here to be depressed. All right, before we go on uh, and do more, we're going to do more music today. I do want to uh, give a shout out to Native Tongue Percussion and the folks there. This is not a commercial. It's just info because the folks there are donating three of these uh, rod strikers to patrons of the channel. So that's good news for you patrons. Not so much good news for you non-patrons, but it's an opportunity. I'm trying to push you guys uh, to become patrons. And I've, I've been using these. You just you can clip this on anything and you can use it to, to strike, you know, bells and blocks and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so pretty cool. I want to thank them for that. So those are the, that's native tongue percussion. Let me show you the packaging again. Looks like this. Rod mount striker. So that's what they donated a few of these. We're going to give those away. Coming up. Not yet. You got to wait. <laughs> All right. Um, what else do I have for you? Oh, I do have a Yanni photo. Because I know... I know Cornelius is a fan. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Some Yanni fans out there. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up with the reflections of Yanni thing. We're not going to go deep, but uh, but I did find one photo to share with you. Here it is. Let me see. Is this it? Let me see. No. There we go. All right. So this is at a dinner, and uh, there's the man, and that's Shardad. Rahani to, well, first of all, Yanni is surrounded by the, was it viola? I think violin, or two violinists, I think, from the orchestra. So this would be 1994, right? The 94 tour. 
when we took an orchestra with us around on the tour. The 93 tour, after, the, after we shot the Acropolis, no, was it the same? No, it was after, okay, so the Acropolis video was shot in October 93, so that was after the summer. The summer of 93 tour, we did a pickup orchestra. 94, we took our own orchestra, a little bit smaller, but we added you know, all those people. So th these, these are a couple of the musicians. And then Shardad is right there on the right, and he, of course, was the conductor and lead violinist opposite Karen Briggs. And they did, you know, all the dueling violin stuff that we love so much uh, in songs like Within Attraction. And then who is that lady on the left? You guys know who that is. That's the infamous Linda Evans. And uh, I don't know what she's doing there. Yanni's like, she's not looking. Get in here and get a picture. Um, but yeah, this was at a band dinner. We, we would often go out to dinner. And they were, they were pretty generous that way. I would say the management was pretty cool in that they would, uh, every once in a while, they would take us all to dinner. And uh, I got to say, once we had the whole orchestra with us, it cut, they cut down on that a little bit. <laughs> I kind of missed the first two years when it was like nine of us. And we would go out to dinner a lot, and uh, but you know it's okay. I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> I just you know you get greedy on the road. You're like, oh man, we used to go out. It used to be just nine. Now there's like 50 people. But uh, the more the merrier. So you guys like the Yanni picks? Yeah. All right. We'll we'll keep. I'll keep dripping them out there. Uh, revisiting the Yanni the Yanni days. I don't even know what Yanni's doing now. I think he's, is he still touring? I think he does some stuff, right? I'm not, I'm not keeping track. Um, but I think he's still making appearances here and there. I don't know. Oh, and welcome people, places, and perspectives. That is, that's a lot. Yes, Linda Evans and Yanni were a couple for many years. That's true. Even before he got thrust into the spotlight, so to speak, because guess what? She did some of the thrusting of him into the spotlight. So yeah, they, they started dating a while back because she really liked his music and got to, they got together. And I mean, she was an executive producer on the Live at the Acropolis. So that sort of tells you about that. But they were, you know, she was very nice. Linda was very lovely, always, always very gracious. And you know, what, what amazed me about Linda is that, um, you know, if you sat down next to her, let's say we're at Soundcheck or something, and, and like I'm out in the house, you know, because I don't need to be up there at the moment, and I would sit down, and she would just start chatting with you about regular stuff, you know? It, very unpretentious. You know, just talk about whatever. And so I appreciate that. I think she's up, up near you guys, Bill. I think she lives up, up near in uh, Seattle, in the Seattle area, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if she still does, but I think she was up there. So, uh, very nice, Washingtonian, Linda Evans. Okay, let's do our pre-Gimme Five uh, stuff. For the, I think we have some people that haven't been included in that yet, here, live now. So that is, Roseanne's uh, probably gonna post the rules. Uh, oh, she had a house in Lakewood. Oh, Lakewood, yeah, I think I was just up there. Give me five. You pick five instruments. Pick, make a list of five things, and I will play something with those five things. I will, I will create some live looping music with those five things. Um, and you can select a tempo and a style if you want, uh, or a theme. You can dedicate it to anything you want, person, a group, a cause. Uh, if you, it's up to you. You don't have to, but that's your choice. Um, and yeah, look at the look at the chat right now because Roseanne's gonna she's gonna throw down the rules for the Gimme Five. It's pretty simple. So just pick five things, and then she'll pick somebody, and then I will try to create music with those five things. Now, some of the things we have today, of course, ukulele, bongos, tan tan is the bass drum, uh, the shakers, bells, cajon down here, which you could see in the overhead. And my, you can see my Adidas slippers. Um, what else do we have? A whole table of stuff over here. Um, you know, blocks, bells, tambourines. There's congas over there. I don't want to move a ton of gear around, to be honest with you. But I will do my best 
to accommodate you guys. It's, that's why I'm here. Uh, we have some tank drums, like if you want to have like a hand pan kind of thing. I'll go get the hand pan. Those are in D minor. I have to go out. They're right outside the door, but I'll go get them. Uh, so we could have hand pan. We could have native flutes. We could have... There's a shrewdy box. Oh, you guys can't see it really. There's a shrewdy box right back there. You see it like just right here? There's a shrewdy box. If you don't know what the shrewdy box is, maybe just add it like, yeah, shrewdy box, yeah. I <laughs> don't even know what it is. Yeah, so make your list and then... Um, We'll look at them. So while that's happening, we're gonna do Q and A, right? So let's go to, nope, percussion master class. I have to mark where my slides are. Uh, just a reminder, we have percussion master classes second and fourth Sundays, of course, um, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. Also, Zuma flute alongs, uh, those are for patrons. So if you're not a patron, you can join and then hang out with me and whoever else shows up. That's a coaching, that's kind of a coaching opportunity. Uh, you know, if you want to get some guidance, you want to ask questions, all that face-to-face -face kind of thing uh, through Zoom. So you can consider that. Is it Bill's turn? Oh, that's exciting. All right, tan tan, flute, bells, egg shakers, cajon. All right, very nice. Very nice. I can almost remember that. <laughs> I see it, and then you guys keep chatting, and then I'm like, it's gone. So, um, tan tan bell. When you say bells, you mean these, the the agogo, and the shakers and cajon and flute. Any particular flute? High flute, low flute, medium flute. It's up to you, Bill. You're the boss. And then if you guys have any questions in the meantime, you can put them in the chat as well. And that's very similar to Mary's. So, you know, you get a two for one. <laughs> Shaker, tan tan, cajon, flute. Are we using the Brazilian flute? It seems like it. Let me see. Let me look down here. The nice A. Yes. All right. It is a nice A. Lord knows it cost me enough. Uh, you got to splurge once in a while. Yeah, I brought, so I have this and I have my backup, <laughs> my backup A here, which <laughs> you guys know what these are. Some of you know what this is. This is a PBC flute or ABS plastic flute, uh, Northern Spirits flute. It's also brown. That's where the similarities end. No, <laughs> these are great flutes too. These are these are this is my you know my backup like emergency flute. It's a PBC or ABS plastic. Sounds good, but I like this one for the feeling. Um, okay, any questions? Oh, what kind of headphones do you have? You mean these right here? These are just some cheap headphones I got with a electronic drum set. I'm not even sure what kind, hold on. V-O-G-E-K. Vogek, Vogek? I don't know, they came with an electronic drum set and then I sold the electronic drum set and I kept the headphones because they're, they're just a cheap set of headphones. But I do have, um, where, also, sometimes I wear these, which are earbuds, and I've gotta tell you, um, I do like these. They're just, I don't know why I don't use these more often. So they're, the headphones are easy to take on and off. Um, these, not so much, but earbuds, I do like. Um, and these, I just got, they're in-ear monitors, but they're not fitted. They're not custom, but I got these on like Amazon, I think. 
I don't think they were that much, 35 bucks or something like that. So these are good, I like those. But a lot of the time, yeah, I'll just use the headphones because you can just whip them on and off. And um, they're okay. I do get a little bit when you're, no, so if any of you are doing looping, you wanna I definitely wear headphones if you can or earbuds. The headphones will, I think, have a little more bleed, you know, so if the mic is very sensitive, sometimes it records uh, back, you know, what I'm hearing in the headphones, it'll actually go into the microphone, which you don't, don't necessarily want um, if you're trying to record a clean track, but it's usually fine, and I keep the volume down in my headphones so that doesn't happen. Um, where did I get the Tantan? I got the Tantan from... I got it from a local music store. I want to say maybe Motherland Music or... There was a store in town called Bang a Drum years ago, and I might have got it there. I don't remember. I've had it like 20 years uh, or more. Um, but it is a, it's a Contemporanea. Let me show you the top. Can you guys read that? Contemporanea, right here. Contemporanea is one of the major uh, Brazilian percussion instrument brands. Uh, really, really good brand. And um, yeah, I would recommend it. Golpe or Contemporanea. Um, there's also some other companies making Tantans, but actually these are very light. Um, and typically I think the Tantan is wood, but then there, you can find like, there's also Hebelo, which is a sometimes metal and but they do have the naga hide head so there's some different sizes of these tantan is like the bigger one and there's some that are a little more compact but yeah great for just little small small musical gatherings <clears throat> anything else um any other questions Oh, what brand of ukulele uh, do I recommend? You know, there's so many good ones. Um, and then I'll get to your question, Cornelius. Uh, you know, I, here's what I think about ukuleles. There, there's two ways you can go, I think. Either get a good, like, popular brand, like you mentioned Fender, Gretsch. Um, I really like the Enya's right now, the Enya ukuleles. No relation to the artist. Um, Enya's making some good ukuleles for the price, and they're... they're uh, machining and the craftsmanship is really, really together. I mean, for a mass-produced ukulele, they're very good. Um, if you can swing it, I recommend getting, If you and you might need to spend a little more, but so take it for what it's worth. Depends on your budget. But I, I found an old uh, um, Kamaka, which is a Hawaiian-made brand, you know, hand like family-owned company, Hawaiian ukulele company. I found a Kamaka some years ago for 400 bucks, which is, if you get it new from them, it's like 1400 And it's an older one. I also uh, have, well, I inherited my grandmother's old Martin ukulele from probably the 1950s, and that's also really sweet. So if you can, you can find deals here and there, like older ukuleles from some of the, you know, the, the main brands before everybody started making ukuleles. That's one thing I would look into, is getting like an old Martin, or a, see if you can get a, a uh, Ohana or a Kamaka, um, you know, a, a nice like crafts, craftsperson made ukulele. So if you can't do that, that's fine. Um, uh, most of the main brands, most of the ukuleles are, are pretty good that are out there, they're available. This is a Kahua, like I said. I mean, it's fine, nothing wrong with it. Uh, Enya's making good ukuleles. Uh, there's there's a lot of different companies. But if you if you now as a patron, Roseanne, I'll tell you if you want to send me a link or something, I'd be happy to look at it for you. All right. So that goes for all patrons. If you guys are looking at instruments and you can message me through the Patreon message system and say, oh, here's a link to an instrument I'm looking at. What do you think? I'm happy to give you some feedback on that. Um, now, Cornelia said, did Yanni get recognized when you went out to dinner? I think so, yeah, I think so. But then, you know, people wouldn't, like, come over. Once in a while, people would come over and ask for an autograph or something. But um, 
You know, it's funny with Yanni, it, you know, Yanni was definitely recognizable, but he wasn't like, he wasn't an actor. He wasn't a, a big sports guy. So I think the people that would recognize Yanni would be Yanni fans, right? And then it wasn't the sort of person that most people would recognize, you know, because he's very famous. But certainly, you know, if we did a show in a town or if he was, people knew he was going to be in the town and we went out to dinner, you know, there might be some Yanni fans you know, at the restaurant. Um, we did go to a movie once. Now, when we were had the smaller band, we all went to see a movie. And the, the issue, though, was Linda Evans. When Linda Evans was with us, people would recognize her, of course. And uh, But what, what they would do is they would, what they did in this case, is they wait till the movie starts. They blocked off like a row, right, in this movie theater. And they wait till the movie basically starts and it, everything goes dark. And they're just showing like the previews or something. And then they bring everybody in and she sort of like keeps down. And, you know, then they bring us all in at one time and she sort of gets in the middle there. And so it's not, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a scene. The paparazzi didn't even know. I'm not even sure there were paparazzi. Well, there were back then, but she was not a paparazzi uh, person. All right. Um, anything else? Because we're gonna we're gonna gimme five it right here in a second. All right, you guys. So again, shaker, cajon, agogo, flute, and what was the last thing? There was one other thing. You got to remind me. And while you're doing that, I'm going to, first I'm going to save what I recorded because I kind of like it. And then I'm going to um, create a blank slate over here. Now, Bill, did you want, you want a tempo or something? Like any, uh, any requests, style, tempo, energy level? And also, uh, oh, how I got the Yanni gig is kind of a long story, uh, but it was through a friend of a friend I got the audition. It's actually crazy. It's a crazy story um, because I, it was, it was such a random. It was like super random that I got it. Um, that I got the audition. And then there were like nine people auditioning and I got the gig for some reason. Uh, I like to think it's because of my sparkling personality and, and dry sense of humor. Um, but I, I don't know. All right. I'm just setting up the looper right now. So... Okay, my choice. All right, that's good. I might do, I might do something a little, I'm going to change the tempo a little bit. Let me see. I feel like we need to get, we're going to get up medium, medium up tempo a little bit. Oh yes, the dad jokes. <laughs> You know, my dad, actually speaking of dads and jokes, my dad has a very dry sense of humor. He doesn't, he's not like a jovial type. He just, he's, he's kind of sarcastic, you know, but the, see, that's what I appreciate about my dad. Cause he just saves it. He like, he's not funny most of the time. And then every once in a while, you know, he says something that's just very dry humor. Uh, but I like that. I like, you know, I like English humor. I like the dry kind of irony, right? The ironic humor. All right, I think we're ready. I'm going to switch mics because this one is better.
Okay, you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm digging this groove. All right, so remember, we've got um, a lot of stuff happening over at patreon.com slash Kalani. You guys can join our Facebook group, World Drum Club. And we post some stuff over there. I want to thank Roseanne again, Roseanne Muster, for hosting. Thanks uh, to you guys for showing up again. And I do apologize for the lack of sound at the beginning, but hopefully we've made up for it by now, I hope. Um, and I will check that. Sam's going to remind me, and I'll have a post-it note on my computer screen. Thanks, you guys, for being here. And uh, wherever you decide to swim, I hope you have a beautiful time, and it's enjoyable and satisfying, as is, as is all of your uh, endeavors, whatever you're doing. Keep doing good stuff. Go out and uh, create something weird and wonderful. See you next time.